Okay, so my RV has a backup camera and it stopped working the other day. I broke something and instead of trying to futz around with it, I decided to do the next best thing, which is buy this camera, by installing it and then reviewing it in this video. And you get a signal, look at that, beautiful. The backup camera in this particular RV it's no longer functional and I'm getting a no signal reading on the screen. What I did is I went on Amazon, looked at some backup cameras and to see which ones got some decent reviews. And I settled on this one. It is the Do Honest camera. That's a terrible name for a company. And uh, let's open up the box and see what's in there. And, uh, see if it works. I don't know, we'll just find out together. All right, so let's check this thing out. Comes in the small box. Why did I choose this one? Well, it is a non-wired version, which I like. This is the instructions. Pretty basic stuff. I usually go to instructions if and when needed, not as a first resort. All right, so we got a little, uh, it's like a five inch screen. I think that's a good size. And then let's go a layer deeper. What else we got? Oh my God, wow. That is a lot of stuff. That's kind of intimidating. I see a small antenna. So let's start there. I'm guessing somewhere in the instructions it says to do this. Did that. There's a bunch of buttons back here on the screen too. We have what looks like it might be a mount. This could be for the camera part. We'll find out. Uh, we have a cigarette lighter adapter. That should be for the, for the screen. Why, yes it is. All right, let you in my, on my methodology for doing these things without instructions. Once you figure out like, once you, okay, this is clearly the camera. Well, it's a little wimpier than I anticipated, but okay, got a little mounting bracket. And then we have what looks to be, oh, that's interesting. It looks like the camera has a small antenna. I guess for transmission's sake. And then it's got this connector. I imagine that's for the power supply. Pretty long, pretty generous cord right there for power supply purposes. All right. So I personally, I think I would like to attach this to the windshield. Now this particular camera did have a couple complaints about the attachment mechanism. Ah, okay. There is a, there is a magnetic plate on the back of this camera. That goes on there, very nice. And then you can stick it to the windshield. It's got this twist ring back here to tighten up on the, you know, the angle, whatever angle it is that you need. All right, so we've got basically a screen, cigarette lighter, that's gonna power that thing up. And then we've got our camera, we need to find a power source for that. Now, a lot of people hook them straight into the, sort of the running lights. That's well and good if you have, I guess, your lights on. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the screen in, see what happens when I plug it in. All right, so here we are up front, command central. And you can see I'm not getting a signal. This whole unit is coming out. That's gonna be another video. Oh, look at that, wireless backup monitor system. Ooh, no signal. All right, kind of what we were anticipating. Well, I think we've seen enough. It works. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's get the camera hooked up and then We'll see about pairing once we do that. So that part was pretty easy. All right, let's take it outside and let's see if we can get this camera hooked up to something. Get this thing working. Come on, can't be that hard. We're at the back of the RV and it's got the existing camera right up here. This one we want to remove, but then what I'm going to try to do is find that power source via this wire. Come on, come on out of there. I feel like I'm about to lose this plug. I just double checked inside to see if the uh, camera sort of magically started working just cause we were like messing with it back here. But that's not the case. That is one eighth. Let's try for seven sixty fourths. That's a bummer. Must be some weird European size. All right, so plan B, you know, life lesson here is the best tool for the job is the one that's perfect for the job, but the second best tool for the job is the tool that will get the job done. And in this case, it happens to be these little pliers. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I do this kind of thing pretty frequently, which is 
make modifications to this particular RV. It is an R-Vision 2007 Trail Light RV, B plus class. I'm gonna be doing all sorts of videos on this thing. I'm also into tiny houses. So broadly speaking, it's an alternative living, tiny houses and RV content. If that floats your boat, check out some of my other stuff. If not, well then just watch this video, I guess. It's hanging by a thread. All right, now it's hanging by nothing. So let's see if we can get this out a little bit further. Ooh, there we go. Well, this camera was by Voyager. Not familiar with this particular model or brand, but pretty robust. And we're replacing it with something that looks a whole lot flimsier. By comparison, we have this versus this. You know, I'd say this is a little bit more robust. This looks like it could go underwater. This, meh. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this wire right here and then I'm gonna isolate the power connector. Cutting through that will probably short the thing out and then I'll blow a fuse somewhere. I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna disconnect the power. We're gonna split these wires out and then we're gonna figure out which ones are the ones that provide the power because that's all we need for this particular camera is just a power supply. And then the Bluetooth functionality of this via this little flimsy antenna is going to magically beam the signal to the front of the RV, which is gonna get us an image. Let's hope. There it is. Everything okay? Yep. All right, so on this particular RV, disconnecting the battery is dead simple since it has this dead man or whatever they call it installed. You simply lift up on this, boom, and then the gap isn't bridged between these anymore. I'll probably drop a link to one of these in the uh, description below as well, but it's a really nifty, quick, fast, easy way to disconnect the battery. So now we know that there's no power going to the backup camera. So let's head back inside and double check that. All right, so just double checked inside and everything that's running off of the engine bay battery is effectively disconnected at this point. So we're just gonna clip this. We got some colors. We got uh, blue, yellow, red, and white. Red and white's a pretty good indicator of power supply. All right, so attempt number one was entirely unsuccessful at the back there. I'm guessing I'm gonna use the running lights. That seems to be what people are using. And then that way, if I have to use the camera, um, I just turn on the lights. Camera will connect. Yeah, it's a good idea to drive with your lights on anyway. So I think that's sufficient for my purposes. So I'm gonna to try to hook this uh, camera, which is now currently under the hood of the RV, into the running lights in the back, and then we'll see how that goes. But that's a good way to troubleshoot something. Just get power to the camera one way or another and then uh, take it from there. Okay, so now that we've established that we can get a signal on that screen and uh, we hook the camera up directly to the battery of this motorhome, we figured out that it's working. So now all that remains is to hook it up to the back. Right up here, we've got three lights. Those are the so-called running lights. What happens is, is when you turn the lights either into the park position or the full on position, those running lights will come on like so. And that is a power source right there. And that is what we're gonna tap into. I'm gonna mount the camera pretty much in the same position that that last camera was in. You can see the bracket uh, is right there. Fiddle around with that a little bit more, but uh, should be uh, should be a pretty easy uh, thing to connect. Let's do it. All right, so it's been raining all day long, so I couldn't really film this last bit. But all I did is I bent out these arms for the bracket. All that wiring I just showed you is connected to this particular light. So when the running lights are on or the headlights are on, this camera is getting power. And this is the antenna for the camera. This plug and this hole were the existing wire routing for the previous camera. Now what happens is when I turn on the lights, we get a signal from the back. You see that the camera is working and you see the ladder that I was just standing on to shoot the prior uh, little clip. That's actually a really good field of view. You're seeing at the very bottom of the screen there, that is the uh, cover for the spare tire. 
So that's kind of how far down I wanted it to go to just have an idea of how close I am to something if I'm backing up. Now it does distort, right? The bumper is not curved like that, but it doesn't matter. You're getting, uh, you're getting the additional field of view and uh, I think that's pretty good. And uh, so you're seeing pretty far down and you're also seeing pretty far up. So if, if I'm on the highway and driving, I can see exactly what's going on behind me. If I switch the lights off, boom, picture goes away. Gives you a no signal reading. All that remains to be done is to really just find a home for this screen. I've got this dash cover. I'm gonna run the wiring underneath the dash cover. So um, all that we're really gonna have is uh, just a small wire going from the cigarette lighter to under here. And then everything else is gonna be right there at the front of the wind, uh, bottom of the wind windshield effectively. So and I'll show you what the end product looks like. All right, so that's kind of what I've come up with. So now you turn it on and you get a signal. Look at that, beautiful. Now from where I'm sitting, that's what I see. I don't find that terribly obtrusive. I think it's kind of cool. From this side, you do see a little bit more wire. I'm the driver. That's what I get to see. That's what I like. So we're gonna go with that. And at least for now, I'm gonna leave that as is. So I would give this camera a rather good review. We'll see how long it lasts. We'll see if there's any problems with it. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. Link to the camera in the description below. It was very easy to install. All you really basically have to do is provide power to the screen, provide power to the camera. There's no fiddling around and, and trying to find the camera. It just immediately syncs up and starts uh, putting the signal out on that screen. So. Hit the like button if this has been helpful. I'll be making more videos shortly. The next upgrade in here is for the now defunct stereo that we have in here. And uh, that's my hat right there. That's my hat.